In this episode, we're looking at Form Manager 2008. This is a module for .NET Nuke that allows you to create forms. Let's start by going over to Manage Form. You see that we have all these choices up here. Editing our form, general settings, uh, messaging and reporting. Let's take a look at some of the form settings. This is, allows us to give the form a name, which we should do here. So we'll call it contact form. You can also set some styles if you like. We're not going to do that right now. The send to action, we'll select user define and put in an email address that we'd like this form to be, submit to. Your email at domain.com. The send from email, we'll just set this as to a, a no reply address since we're only using this to receive mail. And another option that we have down below is we can save this data to a database. So as they submit the form, it can get saved to a database so that we don't lose it in the event that we don't receive it by email. Save that. And then we'll go into other settings. There are a lot of other settings that you can see here, a lot of which we're not going to get into. Uh, but I did want to just show you that, this, that there are a ton of settings. Uh, not all necessary to create a basic contact form. If you want to learn more about these options, there's a great manual that they've put together, um, and it has everything in detail with great screen caps. So at this point, we'll just go and edit our form. Let's go to Edit Form. And it starts you off with one column and one row for your form. And you can adjust this even as you're creating your form. So we'll start by adding a few more columns. Uh, let's start with, uh, let's do five rows. And we'll do two columns. And then we'll click Update. And you can see now that we have a placeholder for all of our controls. And these are form controls like text box and drop down list and other different controls that are available like radio buttons. Let's go ahead and click on add. And for our label, uh, there's different types you can see. There's text box, check box, drop down list, there's a list box, but just do a text box, first name. Our field name will be the same, we just won't put a space here. And we'll set the width to, well, let's start with 60 and see what that looks like. Now there's also a lot of options here, and uh, not all of which is necessary to create our form. So we'll just go to text box options and set it to single line. Uh, columns and rows won't be used here. Max length, we'll set it to 255 characters. You can also see that we have some validators. So we can make this a required field. And if they don't enter it, we can give them error message. First name is required. And then we'll just click update here and it adds in our validator and we'll click update to add the control. Now it looks a little small so why don't we edit that. We'll make it a little larger than double. 130 should be good. And we'll click update. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So let's click on add and add a last name field. Last name. We'll set the width to the same come down let's add our validator update and let's add the control so now we have a first name and a last name now we're going to add a comments box now this is going to be a multi-line box so it's going to be a little bit different set the width to 400 and go to our text box options and select multi-line and we'll put columns and rows which aren't really used except for like backward compatibility on older browsers uh, set the max length to a thousand characters scroll down and hit update now we're going to kind of add a validator on this so they won't re be required to put in comments you see they would it puts an asterisk next to the field name for um, required fields 
Now we'd like for that to span all the way across, so we'll select the column span option, change that to two, and you can see that it goes across two columns. You can also play with like row span to make it span multiple rows. I think what we're going to do now is we'll add a different control. Well, let's see what this looks like first. First name, last name, comments. Looks pretty good so far. Let's go back to manage form and edit form. And we'll add a different type of control this time. Let's add, let's do a drop down list and put like, I guess, best time to call. And our width, 130. Now all we really have to worry about here are the list items. So let's just put a few list items. Uh, let's do evening actually. And our last one will be anytime. Now if you look at morning, we have selected select as true, which means that will default to the one selected uh, when the form pulls up. That should be good. No validator here. Hit update. And you can see that we now have this drop down list. We'll have it span two columns. Looks good so far. Let's go see what this looks like. Oh, let's put in a form heading first. So this is at the top of your form. And we could add images, text, and format that text however we want. So we'll just center this. Hit update, and uh, let's put in a uh, thank you message as well. So when they submit the form, uh, they'll get this message. We'll center, just put you thank you for your submission. You can also have them redirected to another page if that's something you want to do. Okay. As far as the form goes, that's pretty much it. First name, last name, comments, and oh, that seems to be disabled. Uh, let's go back and fix that really quick. Edit form, and edit for this uh, control that we put on here, and uncheck disable user input, and update. So now, now you can see we have a completed form with our drop down list our comments field, our first name and last name, and they could submit this and it would be emailed to us and they'd receive a thank you message. Here's a little bit more formatted um, uh, form uh, that was put together for our customer. And they have check boxes, drop down lists, radio buttons, um, and they use this for providing estimates. And it's got a little bit of style that was provided with the form and it looks pretty good. And that's the header they have there. But you can see you don't have any limitations in, as to what you can do with this form, which is really nice. Of course, once again, if you're looking for some really good documentation, they've got very thorough documentation that they've put together. So if there's any controls you don't understand, you just highlight it on the left, click on it. You can see that there's really nice screenshots for explaining everything. So you can pick up this module at snowcovered.com for $69.95. It's my favorite form module. It's Form Master 2008. And uh, thank you for listening, and I look forward to doing another module review in the near future. Thanks a lot.